Hi guys. Yes, a little bit. Now that the fog is burning off here, good lord, it is turning into yet another spectacularly gorgeous day, heading to 84 degrees here in the Point Lonesome Swamp here in the Oasis of Freedom on this soon to be lovely Friday morning, December 10th, 2020. 21 84 degrees on December 10th and you ask why I am a snowbird uh, <coughs> but anyway since it is Friday morning time to do what I do every Friday morning and that is to bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to see their latest depressing list of uh, assaults against this collapsing planet that have been unfolding over the past week while the world's attention is riveted to the O word, which we're actually going to have one mention of. We can't get through even a Manga Bay rant without the O word, uh, and that's not overpopulation overshoot or overconsumption okay trust me the o word is none of those three but uh anyway the little dog seems to have him a rat cornered so we're gonna let the little dog get back to his rat like that and uh, we're gonna dive in to mongabay.com are you just gonna hang out with us the log you tired of chasing your rat or what all right, we're going to start off on uh, well, off of the west coast of sub-Saharan Africa. It's good a place as any to start off looking at the collapse of a planet. We're going to start with the big picture and zero in to the small and the big picture. <clears throat> off West Africa's coast, a sea of oil spills goes unreported. And one of the first comprehensive studies, <clears throat> researchers uh, from France found evidence of 18,063, over 18,000 oil slicks just in the Gulf of Guinea between 2002 and 2012, the bulk of which were tied to shipping and offshore oil production. Uh, the images suggest that the total amount of oil spilled into the Gulf of Guinea over the study period was greater than 2010's Deepwater Horizon catastrophe despite going largely unreported. Do you think so? And speaking of, uh, I don't know why they went to the Gulf of Guinea uh, when they should have gone to the Niger Delta. This is what is going on with the Niger Delta this week and every week for the past 50 years. Niger Delta communities in great danger as month-old oil spill continues. Again, as the 50-year-old oil spill continues, oil has been spilling from a wellhead in Nigeria's Belessa state for a month now, with the company responsible for it unable to contain it. Experts say the scale and duration of the oil spill is so severe that it is imperative that local communities be relocated for their safety. Oil spills and other forms of pollution caused by the industry are common in the area, the heart of the oil-rich Niger Delta. <clears throat> Companies, including foreign oil majors, are largely left to self-declare the spills that frequently occur but face only token fines for failing to respond quickly. 
do you think so? The Niger Delta in Nigeria. Good God Almighty. Anybody wanting to find uh, the poster child of the collapse of civilization and the planet should start in Nigeria. There is. A, I'm, again, guys, I'm only going to be able to touch on about half of these stories. We have a uh, whole raft of stories. You know, this next story about uh, you know reintroducing rhinos into a national park where they were poached to extinction. You, 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 you see this story over and over again. So the poachers come in, they wipe out every single rhino, elephant, whatever, uh, inside the national park. So what do they do? They bring in more rhinos, uh, splash it all across the news, so the poachers can come back in and say, thank you very much for all the free rhinos. I I anyway, uh, <laughs> good for, uh, good for them. I anyway, moving in, uh, as long as we're over there, let let's just stick with uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, we, we have the, you know, the oil spills and the poaching. Uh, this was actually, uh, I touched on this last week. Last week, this was Manga Bay's YouTube video about uh, what's going on in the Congo Basin, layers of carbon the Congo Basin peatlands and oil, the peatlands of the Congo Basin may be sitting on top of a pool of oil. So we got peatlands on top of a pool of oil, uh, though exploration is yet to confirm just how big it may be. Uh, yes, good luck. Uh, Researchers calculate that the peatlands themselves, not, not, not counting the oil, believe them, can contain 30 billion metric tons of carbon or about the amount that humans, you know, in, on this entire planet produce in three years. As the governments of the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo, you know, that's two different countries, uh, work to develop their economies. Yes, uh, you can just, well, do your, do your own math. Uh, there's another story about uh, these peatlands. Uh, as well. Good Lord, where is the one more story about the uh, the peatlands? Good God, uh, this is today's. Uh, in anyway, and this never. Okay, one in a. No, that's another story about uh, how screwed uh, the Congo is. Anyway, maybe I lost it. Uh, here we go. Uncovering the peatlands of the Congo Basin. Uh, this is a massive peatland the size of England covering 145,000 square kilometers, otherwise known as 56,000 square miles, and holds about 20 times as much carbon as the U.S. releases from burning fossil fuels in a, in a year. Uh, today, the peatlands are relatively still intact. Uh, but the threats in the form of agriculture, oil and gas exploration and logging loom on the horizon. Yes. Uh, 
I'm sure uh, we all know, take a wild guess where this is going. You can expect the peatlands and the pool of oil beneath them uh, in the Congo, in the world's second biggest rainforest, to be, you know, one of the, well, the, the, the Congo rainforest is gone anyway. It's being attacked, you know, in this latest discovery, guys, it's all over. It's all over. Anyway, let's move on from Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, okay, I love it. So we were just talking about uh, Manga Bay's YouTube channel. So this week on their YouTube channel, uh, Manga Bay explains, I love it when they ask a question, do carbon offset markets really work? The answer to the question, do carbon offset markets really work, is no. Carbon offset markets do not work really or other. I mean, they don't work towards saving the planet. What they work towards is giving these planet-eating uh, multi-billion dollar multinational corporations an excuse to go right on about business as usual selling their their corporate greenwashing bullshit uh, down the throats of any gullible uh, clueless moron mainstream environmentalist uh, and, and I'm a, and I haven't watched the video guys but I am afraid that Rhett Butler himself might be participating uh, unwittingly in spreading the bright green lie of carbon markets. They are unadulterated horseshit. Okay? It is corporate greenwashing horseshit, as I say, giving these, th these uh, bastards the right to go right on about business as usual. I would like to give Rhett the benefit of the doubt that he's going to answer the question honestly, uh, but I'm afraid he's not. Anyway, uh, you know, here's this article about protecting coral reefs against sediment runoff by restoring. Uh, coastal forests like mangroves and whatnot. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm in full support of restoring uh, mangroves and other coastal forests to protect the runoff from uh, burying coral reefs, but there's two problems here. Number one, it ain't gonna happen. That, that, that's problem number one, it ain't gonna happen. And, and, and number two, while as, as, as much as I'm cheering on something that has no chance of happening, that there's no <laughs> hope of it happening, you, you, you know, coral reefs are doomed anyway. And so are mangroves, uh, you know, with, for all the other reasons. Uh, but anyway, you go for it. Get restoring your coastal forest police. Um, several uh, articles this week, and there's so much here, guys. It, it, I, I'm just going to try to encapsulate this. There's several articles this week uh, talking about the, uh, you know, the hopium of all of these massive tree planting schemes. To, uh, to fight global warming by planting, tr getting out there and planting billions and billions and billions of trees. And uh, as, the, you know, as more and more real-time research comes in, we're, we're starting to see the various problems. And, and, and here's one, uh, an interesting... <laughs> One about how tree planting goals 
miss the forest for the lack of diverse, good quality seeds. They can't even get their hands on any uh, decent seeds. Uh, with countries pledging at COP26 to end net forest loss, the worry is that such unsustainable restoration projects will only be another smokescreen for continued deforestation. Uh, it, it, exactly, it's this, it, this, is, this whole thing is just cropping up to be the latest bright green lie for all kinds of reasons. And there's another story in here and that actually found its way onto the mainstream media. All of this tree planting stuff, it, 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 it's so full of loopholes, corporate greenwashing, it's leave it the hell alone. All right, leave it the hell alone and, and let mother nature figure it out. Uh, that mother nature, uh, just get the humans out of it. The humans managing a forest. Humans are the ones destroying the forest. Uh, leaving it up to humans to, to manage a forest. Uh, it, it's like leaving it up to Sancho Panza to manage a chipmunk population restoration campaign. Get the humans out of there. Make the forest a human exclusion zone and Mother Nature will do a better job of, of cleaning up the mess humans may. All we're going to do is make a bigger mess out of it while, uh, you know, just giving the global corporatocracy one more avenue. This is all, you know, this is just a cousin uh, of that carbon offsetting crap. It, 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 it is all in, in the sustainability pledges. It's all crap. If you ever see the global corporatocracy getting behind whatever the bullshit scheme is, I don't care what it is, carbon offsetting markets, sustainability pledges, deforestation pledges, uh, uh, I mean, no, no deforestation, uh, what is it, we have the dolphin safe tuna, I don't care what it is, if, if, if there is any sort of global corporation uh, claiming uh, that, that they have any interest in saving this planet, it's crap, all of it, all of it. It, it's just hopium soaked, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it, it's just to get the greenies off their back. Uh, here's one right here. Hold the, hold the tree planting. Protect ecosystems first. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, here is the latest study, yet another study, just what I'm, uh, the last thing on the list, uh, the last thing on the list is humans getting in there and, and, and planting trees. Uh, all right, we were talking about coral reefs before uh, here, all right, let's just, just check in with this one. This is, we're going to go to the coral reefs off of East Africa. But of course, you can say this for any coral reef on the planet. We must reverse the pressures on, on coral reefs before it is too late. Yes, this is David Obura and Melita Samalees. Uh, a um, 
I guess this is an opinion, a commentary. Uh, they are leaders of Coastal Oceans Research and Development Indian Ocean East Africa. Yes, <clears throat> present evidence that coral reefs in the western Indian Ocean are now at a tipping point. Every coral reef on the planet, including these, are at a tipping point. Quote, we cannot overstate how close our coral reefs are, I'm sorry, our coral reefs are to collapse. If we do not make the right decisions in the next 10 years, coral reefs of the western Indian Ocean will become irreversibly damaged. Close quote. 10 years, my culo. Okay, uh, <clears throat> been reporting, you know, for the past three years about this hilarious uh, moratorium on, uh, on new oil palm plantations uh, in Indonesia, uh, which has been an absolute joke. But I won't say it's been an absolute joke. This official government moratorium on uh, new palm oil plantations in Indonesia has kept the planet eaters at bay a little bit. All right, it gives them a little, you know, a few more people they have to bribe, a few more laws they have to break at the risk of a tiny little fine, but it hasn't been completely uh, worthless. But take a wild guess. Forest will disappear again. Activists warn as Indonesia ends plantation freeze. With the Indonesian government refusing to renew a three year ban on issuing licenses for new oil palm plantations, experts are warning of a deforestation free for all. The end of the moratorium means companies can once again apply to, you know, legally develop new plantations, including clearing forest to do so. Hmm. This coincides with a rally in the crude palm oil price due to tightening, tightening supply which activists say portends a possible surge in deforestation. According to one analysis, <coughs> this is just inside Indonesia, according to one analysis, rainforest spanning an area half the size of California, or 21 million hectares, otherwise known as 52 million acres. Uh, I didn't even realize there were 52 million acres of old growth rainforest remaining in Indonesia are now at risk of being cleared, otherwise known as obliterated off the face of this planet, now that the moratorium is no longer in place. The uh, Indonesian government has simply uh, given the planet eaters carte blanche to obliterate uh, 52 million acres, uh, which, which has to be pretty much all that's left in, in the entire country of Indonesia. And of course, you have to keep in mind, there is no such thing of any sort of oil palm plantation moratorium anywhere else on the planet in Latin America or Africa or anywhere else. This oil palm, uh, palm oil, oil palm uh, attack on this planet is heading into overdrive. Uh, Anyway, again, guys, I, uh, 
I, 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 I'm touching on about uh, half of them. Okay, we're going to go. We haven't been down to the Amazon rainforest. What is going on in the Brazilian Amazon? They will die. Fears for the last Piratura. I think that's the name of an Indian tribe. As Amazon invasion ramps up. Overflight images show that outsiders have not just invaded the Purupura indigenous territory in the Brazilian Amazon, but are also expanding their illegal cattle ranches in what is supposed to be the protected land of one of the world's most vulnerable uncontacted indigenous groups. De deforestation inside the officially protected territory surged nearly 100 fold in the 12 months since August of 2020, which indigenous rights activists attribute to anticipation among would-be invaders that, you know, an ordinance banning outsiders will not be renewed. The invaders are now closing in on the parts of the territory inhabited by the Paki and Tamandua tribe. Uh, there may be another 13 tribes in the area who have chosen to remain uncontacted. Uh, <clears throat> They suffered one massacre back in the 1980s, and here comes another one. And I, uh, don't you, uh, right next to that story is this Hopium story. Indigenous groups unveil plan to protect 80% of the Amazon in Peru and Ecuador. A new plan, all right called the Amazon Sacred Headwaters Initiative proposes the protection of 80% of the Amazon in Peru and, I'm sorry, in Peru and Ecuador by 2025, covering an area of 35 million hectares, otherwise known as 86 million acres of rainforest. Yes, good for them. Uh, the proposal has received positive response from Ecuadorian and Peruvian government officials. All right, but faces a stumbling block. What would that be? How about the fact that both countries rely heavily on extractive industries operating within the very area of the Amazon, talking in here to help pay off foreign debt. And I could launch off into a whole Chinese Belt and Road Initiative rant here. Uh, but I, I simply don't have time connecting the dots between the extractive industries uh, to pay off all of the debts created by the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. It would get way too complicated and I understand I'm already talking to myself. Uh, Here's a story on the illegal wildlife trade. We've heard it all before. Oh, good God. It's over here in Cambodia. Major clothing brands contribute to deforestation in Cambodia. Do you think so? 
uh, a new report suggests that the garment industry is contributing to deforestation in Cambodia due to factories relying on illegal forest wood to generate electricity. Yes. And so far in uh, this century, Cambodia has lost an estimated 6.7 million acres or 2.7 million hectares. Uh, but of course, the garment industry pales, pales in comparison to the agro-industrial uh, industry uh, given the full green light by the Cambodian government remains by far the dominant driver of forest loss in Cambodia and everywhere else on the planet. Uh, all right, we have uh, we have the O word uh, cropping up here uh, in the uh, in Manga Bay. Latest delay cast a pall over bid to end harmful fishing subsidies. So they were getting ready to have you know like like anything was really going to happen. But they were finally, after years of work, were getting ready to hammer out the details of this, uh, of ending these bullshit subsidies, these fishing subsidies. Uh, you know, paying, uh, paying these giant fishing corporations to uh, overfish the oceans. And there was finally a ray of hope. Every so they were getting together this big meeting uh, scheduled for December third. But guess what? Days before the meeting was to start, organizers postponed the event indefinitely due to concerns over the newly announced corona panic variant Omicron. Negotiators have been struggling to close the remaining gaps in an agreement for 20 years. 20 years of work has been put on hold indefinitely because of the O word. Observers say the ongoing failure to reach agreement on fishing subsidies calls into question, yes, the UN's ability to adapt to a changing world and meet the UN's sustainable development goal. Yes. Here is a, a, another article on these unadulterated horseshit uh, timber certification schemes. So this is going to be what you can look for our furniture, our furniture manufacturers uh, coming out with their bullshit sustainability uh, label. This is the program for the endorsement of forest certification. Yes. Uh, experts point out that timber certification is no guarantee of deforestation free products. Yes. Do you think? think so. Um, we, uh, we talked about, uh, we mentioned the, the up close story. Here is the bigger story. Amazon mining threatens 
dozens of uncontacted indigenous grape study shows. A study published this week in Global Environmental Change shows that the approval of, of a new Brazilian bill allowing mining on indigenous land could be detrimental to up to 43 uncontacted indigenous groups. Uh, almost half of mining requests in the Brazilian Amazon uh, registered uh, through the National Mining Agency. A total of 3,600 are located in indigenous territories with uncontacted groups. Do you think so? But we're going to wind up in Indonesia. Indonesia's new plan for coal pollutes land and air, so why not the sea also? Environmental activists have lambasted a new plan by the Indonesian government to use bricks made from coal ash as building blocks for coral transplant projects. Yes, uh, you've got to love it. Uh, using coal ash to save the coral reefs. There, there, there is no end to this corporate greenwashing bullshit. It goes on and on and on. Using coal ash to save a planet. Guys, you can't make this crap up. But anyway, since I have been talking to myself for the past 20 minutes, I'm going to wrap it up because it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp. And I have to get out there and enjoy this 84 degree day in December while I still can. And I highly suggest you do the same. Bye, guys.